Welcome to a report on the EDB space program's continuing efforts to send a Kerbal to the surface of the moon and return that Kerbal safely to the Earth. The first lunar lander system that we launched was from Colonel Sanders of Kentucky Fried Construction. This is the Deep Fried system and this is actually Deep Fried Part 2 which had to be launched before Deep Fried Part 1 which was the crewed portion of the mission. It is launching on a Vesta 2 rocket by Satellite 999 of Satellites R Us. And early on we had a problem with a loss of performance in one of the first stage engines. And that also included a loss of specific impulse. And then that was followed by a second engine experiencing loss of performance. It was not possible to simply shut off the engines because not only would there be a relative lack of thrust but also the other engines would go beyond their rate of burn time. So we had to use them even though they had lower ISP and that led to much less delta V than expected. Also since the second stage was starting relatively lower in the atmosphere than anticipated that caused additional difficulties with getting the payload to orbit. The payload in this case being the lunar transfer stage the need for two launches is due to the fact that our launch pad can only accommodate rockets up to 800 tons. And even though we are only attempting to launch a single Kerbal to the surface of the moon, it still requires a substantial amount of payload capacity. And so most of the missions require two launches. One of the missions actually requires three. But in this case, we decided that this transfer stage clearly would not end up with enough delta V to push the other portion of the mission to the moon, and so it was aborted and uh, was left to be destroyed on re-entry into the atmosphere. So that was a sad situation, but we did have other rockets being repaired. The next one was from Cool Industries Rockets. The lunar lander on the Bluebird rocket. Both the lander and the Bluebird designed by Coolney 14 of Cool Industries rockets. This was a three-part mission. This is an uncrewed lander at this point and it would have to attach with the second part of the mission which is a lunar transfer stage and that part would launch it on translunar injection and then the lander pod would make orbit around the moon and then have to rendezvous with the third part of the mission, which was a Kerbal transfer pod, which would bring the Kerbal to the moon, into orbit around the moon, and then return the Kerbal safely back to the Earth, but not land. So the Kerbal would have to transfer from the Kerbal transfer pod to this lander in lunar orbit, and then land using this lander, and then take off again from the surface of the moon in this lander, and then rendezvous again with the the Kerbal transfer pod to bring him or herself back to the Earth. So a rather complicated sort of situation it includes one Earth orbit rendezvous and two lunar orbit rendezvous. The EDB had some understandable qualms about this whole system, including the height of the lander, which is quite high and stands in a fairly slim base. But also the, just the fact that there are three launches with uh, three opportunities for things to go wrong. And we will have to see. But so far so good up to this stage of the launch of the Bluebird. We had previously launched the transfer stage that it is supposed to use to transfer over to the moon. And that was the Hercules transfer stage on the Aphrodite rocket. Uh, unfortunately that particular launch was not captured. For reasons that will become apparent eventually, that particular Hercules transfer stage will not actually factor in on any of the missions that we attempted. So here we are making orbit with the final stage of the Bluebird rocket. And unfortunately that engine uh, cannot relight and so we had to abandon it. But at this point the mission hit a bit of a snag. In particular, uh, the lander pod was caught on the decoupler and therefore could not be used. And so it was once again the turn of the deep fried system and we tried again to launch the deep fried part 2 ahead of launching the deep fried part 1, hoping this time that the launcher would not have any issues with its engines.
Unfortunately, being lined up with the moon during this season meant that we had to launch at night. And so that was unfortunate, especially with the ground lighting being what it is. Not entirely sure why it's so dim. But everything on the first stage proceeded according to plan. Everything was nominal as we went on to the second stage. And there is second stage ignition. And after that, fairing separation. Now you'll note that these rockets tend to have a lot of stages. And the reason for that is because everybody was trying to get the maximum payload capacity out of 800 ton rockets. And so, since rocket engines are actually not very heavy, uh, having the extra stages helps, as opposed to having like a two-stage rocket to orbit. Having a three-stage rocket to orbit uh, does give you a little bit more payload capacity. The downside is, of course, additional cost, uh, but in this case, uh, as we are trying to go to the moon as quickly as possible, uh, cost is not an object. What turned out to be the issue with this particular system is that the main engine on this transfer stage cannot be relit. It's the RD0210 from the Proton rocket. And so to make its rendezvous, it has no other main engine, so to make its rendezvous, it had to use RCS. We will explore the ramifications of that in a moment. But first, since that was successful in reaching orbit, we were ready to launch our Kerbal into orbit. Nancy Kerman launching on the Deep Fried Part 1, again on the Vesta 2 rocket. And so the question is whether this is the system that finally manages to bring us to the surface of the moon. And everything was fine on booster separation, right there. Bit of a delay there. And the first stage performed fine. And so a successful separation of that stage and ignition of the second stage. Very tenuous as you can see as uh, our systems were being taxed having done a number of launches in sequence. Here launch escape system separation. A little bit higher than expected due to the fact that the script did not handle it. And then separation of the second stage and ignition of the third stage. So yes, uh, three stages to orbit plus boosters. But while there was extra expense, at least it meant that in the case of an engine failure, we could potentially move on to the next stage and uh, therefore salvage something of the mission. Alright, and there we have it. Orbit is achieved and we can proceed with operations. Nancy Kerman ready to rendezvous with the Deep Fried Part 2. Engines on this stage that you see here are the 58s. But those are not going to be used for the transfer. The transfer is going to utilize this stage with the RD0210 and here we are attempting to make the rendezvous burns with RCS. Needless to say, this was extraordinarily tedious and also uh, was the ultimate result of disappointment because as we got to the closest push distance we could not wipe out our relative velocity with the target quickly enough and so eventually we passed it and the target began pulling away. Once it was clear that the attempts to kill relative velocity were completely failing we attempted to replot, but the margins were exceedingly tight on the RCS fuel remaining. And it was decided that we couldn't use the Deep Fried Part 1's engines in order to try and complete the rendezvous. And the safest thing to do at this point was to deorbit Nancy and bring her back rather than uh, risk anything. Also, I believe there was a thruster issue on this RD-58 stage and we were using the RCS on the capsule. So that was another issue. And so here you see the lander portion. Uh, tall, but not quite as tall as the version from Cool Industries rockets. And using, you'll note, uh, girder segments as landing struts because the EDB has not unlocked 
uh, has not developed uh, proper landing struts yet. Turns out those are extremely high technology. And so here Nancy coming back down through the atmosphere uh, with relative safety because of course this capsule was designed for returns from the moon. And at least we can make sure that our Kerbals return home safely. So a bit of a disappointment there. And with that we turn back to the entry from Cool Industries rockets. The Lunar Lander on the Bluebird rocket again. This time with proper payload integration after having failed on that last time. The EDB did acknowledge fault on that. Uh, it was a matter of the EDB's payload integration systems and not due to manufacturing faults. The time taken to build this rocket meant that we were finally in a season where launching to the moon meant launching in daylight, which was welcome. Uh, much better look at our rockets. And there, the first stage out after a successful burn, and on to the second stage. This particular rocket does not have any boosters. It is three stages to orbit. It also previously had an additional stage that was removed. It wasn't deemed necessary for launching to orbit with this payload. And so second stage successful, and finally the third stage. Ignition of an LR-91, I believe, uh, the upper stage of a Titan rocket. And on this stage, we make orbit with plenty of fuel to spare. Some clear margin here. And so the rocket is successful and we proceed on to see if the lander can pull away cleanly from it. There we go, separation. Unfortunately, we can't deorbit this third stage. But the lander is indeed moving away and we are ready to go. That was as planned, but what wasn't as planned is the third stage assigned to spontaneously explode. Well, not the whole thing, just a part on the third stage assigned to explode for suspicious reasons. As we turn to the transfer stage, the Hercules uh, transfer stage that the pod was supposed to meet up with, well, that just completely exploded, well, except for the control core and the docking port, which isn't very useful. And so this is the Hercules that had been previously launched that we didn't have video of the launch for, and this is why uh, it isn't particularly important. So we had to launch another one of those. Not entirely sure why it decided to explode like that. Probably a Kraken strike. So this is the Hercules transfer stage on the Aphrodite rocket, the Hercules transfer stage designed by Shearstrut Industries, Aphrodite, a rocket by Cool Industries Rockets. Bit of a wiggle and a wobble initially. SAS helped to stabilize that situation. And again, this system involves two uncrewed parts and then one crewed part, so we're still trying to put the uncrewed part of the mission together. And here we go, booster separation. Quite a long delay there, and not entirely sure whether that was a timing issue or otherwise a different lag issue. But there we go, finally the boosters come off. And the core continues with its payload. This rocket lights 10 engines on the ground and has 6 on the core, and that 6 engine core now separates. Yeah, a bit of a delay there too. This is unusual. Perhaps tied with the Kraken strike that we just saw. And that separation reveals a single NK-15V engine. We have fairing separation, and this transfer stage has one kilonewton thrusters, four of them, in order to help with rendezvous so it's not relying on RCS thrusters. It could also light its RD-58 engines, which have four ignitions, in order to make the rendezvous. But unfortunately, the launcher does put it into a very high apoapsis. That could make it easier to rendezvous, but 
it's gonna take some fuel to bring that apoapsis back down. The stage separates. And... Seems to be alright, despite unusual sounds. And so you can see we need a serious rendezvous burn in order to make it to the target. The lander that was delivered by the Bluebird rocket. Since the actual lunar injection burn only requires one ignition, we can use up to three ignitions with these engines in order to make the rendezvous. But of course, using the engines in that way means less fuel for the actual transfer with the lander, and it turns out that that does become an issue. Though not the only issue. The fact that the rendezvous burn caused the periapsis somewhat in the atmosphere was interesting, but not detrimental to the situation, and we did end up being able to approach the target as planned. And docking proceeded as planned, with a successful contact, and a good attachment. And so, the plot was made for a translunar injection burn, but it turned out that the transfer stage would not have enough fuel to make it. We decided to proceed anyway and potentially reassess in lunar orbit, but then one of the engines, one of the RD-58s on the transfer stage had loss of performance and the stage simply could not fulfill its duties in that way. We tried to shut down the engine and maintain stability, but that failed. The decision was made to try and send a new Hercules to this particular mission in an attempt to continue it on its way, and that Hercules transfer stage was to be launched on Shearstadt Industries' own Baryon rocket. Thanks to this additional launch of a Hercules transfer stage, it meant that the Cool Industries rocket system would have far more margin than any other system. Uh, unfortunately, of course, it would require four launches now, but the important thing is trying to get the Kerbal to the moon in time. A contract is underway, and time is running out. The Baryon rocket performed as expected during the first stage, despite an odd rotation. The boosters did take an unusual amount of time to separate again, possibly a timing issue. While inconvenience, the delay is not detrimental to any particular mission. The four poor NK-15Vs continue to perform nominally through their entire burn time. And so separation and then ignition of a single NK-15V. That on the second stage. Unfortunately this was an early test of this rocket with this particular launch script and it turned out that the launch script was not prepared for the long burn times of the second stage and especially the third stage. The third stage is extremely long with an NK9V engine. And so we see here fairly low time to apoapsis as the second stage concludes its business and separates off to make way for the third stage. Third stage ignites. Uh, the rocket is still a long way from orbit and begins to descend. Still 2,400 meters per second short of orbit and not much acceleration from this engine at this point. And the end result is this particular Hercules stage re-enters and is unable to rescue the lander from the Cool Industries rockets. And so we leave you with this epic destruction of the Hercules stage. We hope you enjoyed this video presentation, this report, of the activities of the EDB space program.